it's wrong period. Let's not use that. You guys had this one. There you go. So th these were the these were the ones that were missed the most on that practice test that we used as grade replacement. The first one, this one probably won't show up. Uh, I know we haven't gone over it in class, but I just threw it in there just to see if anybody has learned this one before. The word parallel means same slope. What's the slope of the line that they're giving you? Yeah, negative 4 over 3. This is the slope. So what's the same slope as that? Just wondering if maybe you guys take an educated guess. The word parallel, that's what that means. Par parallel, parallel lines go infinitely in the same direction without ever intersecting. What causes them to go in the same direction is the, is the same slope. So, uh, if you wanted to be more specific, same slope with different y-intercepts. Um, and and actually, and actually, you know what? I take you know what? No, I take it back. You know what? We did go over this. We did it with systems. We did it with. We didn't have a lesson on. We did. We didn't cover perpendicular. But actually, parallel is a fair game. Uh, you remember at the, when we first introduced um, <coughs> in systems of equations, we said lines that have different slopes will intersect once. Lines that have the same slope will either be on top of each other or parallel, depending on the y-intercept. If you have the same slope and different y-intercept, um, that, that that would make it um, that would make them parallel. So you actually should already know that parallel means same slope. So actually, I take it back. This was it. But nor normally, we teach this also, like when we do parallel and perpendicular. But um, you haven't learned per perpendicular, but you have learned parallel. Parallel means same slope. Evaluate uh, using the values given. So just plug in a 10 for y and a negative 4 for z. So negative 4 minus 3 times 10. And then y minus y is 10 minus 10. What's anything minus itself? Zero. What's anything times zero? So uh, this all of, that knocks out all of those. So ten minus ten is zero. That knocks down everything. So you're only left with z, which is negative four. Negative four. Solve the equation. Remember on the Google forms, uh, just put the number. So I, it's like I'm gonna get v equals something, but instead of putting v equals, I'm just gonna write the um. The number. Uh, what would I do first? Distribute v. Uh, actually, the first one's going to be 4 times negative 8. That's going to be minus 32 v. And then plus 32 is equal to 32 minus 4. Well, what should you do next? Write like terms negative 31 v plus 32 is equal to 32 minus 4 v. And then? Plus, put all the v's on the same side. You could, all, you could do plus 31v or you could do plus 4v. But the thing is that when you're going to put the constants on the same side, no matter what you do, they all cancel out. So what's left on the left side? If everything cancels out, what's left on the left side? What is left on the left side? Zero. So everything cancels on the left side, nothing is left here. Now on the right side, here that would be 27b. Now sadly, some people when they see this, they're like, oh yeah, no solution. No, there's no solution. You would just go ahead and divide by 27. But what's zero divided by anything? It would be. So the solution I get is zero equals v. But on the Google form, I would just put zero. Yeah, no, it was just fine. That's why you get all the girls. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know how this one, I don't know how this one was missed so much. Uh, distribute 3B plus 
27 is equal to negative 27 minus 27 minus 27. 3b equals negative 24 divided by 3. b equals negative 18. Now this one here we haven't done, but that doesn't mean it won't show up. They, they, sometimes they, they like to stick these in there now. Um, and I actually, you know what? Now that I think about, I think I think I might have skipped these all together because with the trailer course, sometimes you got to cut some corners in order in order to be able to get some more time for things. So uh, you're gonna want to pay attention to this. Now, now what you would know how to do is if these were equal signs then you should know how to graph them, right? Because they're both equal slope intercepts. So let's do that. Let's pretend. What's the slope of the first one? Um, negative 2 over 3. What's the y-intercept? 0, negative 1. For the second one, what's the slope? Negative 2. Negative 2 over 1. Because we want to write as a fraction for graphing purposes. And the mean is at 0, 3. So that's the first thing I'm going to look for, just that when instead of equal signs, we have inequality signs, we don't call them lines, we call them boundaries. But that's what we're looking for. Do you notice how this one here is like kind of like segmented? A segmented boundary is if you did not have the or equal to sign underneath. If that little or equal to is not underneath, that's when it would be segmented. But here, I have or equal to on both of them. So I'm looking for two solid lines. I'm looking for two boundaries that are solid. So, I, like, I already know that it can't be B. But it could be the other ones, okay? Um, now, let's see. We're looking for one that's going to cross at negative 1 with a slope of negative 2 over 3. So, here we're crossing at negative 1, but it looks like we're going up. Oh, no, this one. We're going up 4, and then... Um, running three, four over three. So it doesn't look like it could be A. Let's see, um, C at negative one. There's not even anything crossing there at negative one. This last one, D, yeah, that one looks fine. And then the other one is supposed to be crossing at three. With a slope of negative two over one. Yeah, so it's gonna end up being D. I'll show you one last thing, and then you know, normally this takes an entire lesson to show you guys. If you pick up on it, great. If not, you know, don't worry about it. Hopefully it doesn't show up on the final. Um, but how do we shade in? Okay. Well, here's what you're supposed to do, right? Think of these. Just go one line at a time. Let's go with the first one. When I was crossing a negative one. And pretend this was a hill. And here's little Ferris climbing the hill. Okay. Can you picture that? Ferris is going to climb up the hill. If that was a picture of Ferris walking up a hill, what would be, what would you see in this part of the picture? If we're outdoors and that's Ferris climbing up a hill, what would you see in that part of the picture? What if, if, I, if I drew it in this color, would that be better for you to visualize? What, what, what would be on this part of the picture if that was a little Ferris climbing up a hill? The sky, yeah, it'd be the sky. And what would be on this part of the picture if this was Ferris climbing up the hill? The, the ground or the hill, right? So on an inequality, since y is the variable by itself, if the mouth is eating the y, you shade the sky. If not, you shade the hill, the ground. So the first hill that Ferris is going to climb up First inequality that was up here is the mouth eating a y there. So mouth eating y, y is big, you would change the sky. So watch. I'm going to pretend that the other graph is not there. I'm only going to focus on um, where the sky would be. And I'm going to shade all of this stuff. This is the sky of the hill that Ferris is climbing up. And we agree on that. So now Ferris is trying to challenge himself. He goes, oh, yeah, that hill, it wasn't steep enough. I want to climb up a steeper hill now. So he goes to the other one. But on this one here, 
Is the mouth eating the wire? No, so we have to shade the ground. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shade the ground in a different color. Do you guys understand primary colors and secondary colors? So I'm gonna get crazy now and I'm gonna shade the ground of the other hill in blue. Everything that's on the ground I'm gonna shade in blue. Since I already have yellow on the screen, if I mix yellow and blue and there's an overlap, what color should appear? Green, right? Blue and yellow make green. Let's see. So I'm looking at this other thing. I'm going to my blue. I'm creating blue. Everything is nice and blue. Whoa-oh! SpaghettiOs. <laughs> Well, you look at that. What color just showed up? So wherever the overlap is occurring, that's what you're supposed to shade, which is why when you go back and look at the original, that's what they have shaded it, where that green region was. If you get it, fine. If not, whatever. You know, like with the trailer courses that try to go a little bit slower. Even if you think it's going fast, believe me, it's going slower. And sometimes you have to cut certain things. This is where I think one of the things we cut. Yeah, hopefully. And if it does, it's not going to show up too much. Okay, this we did. <coughs> solve by elimination. I, I would have solved by elimination anyways, even if they wouldn't have told me to. So the question is, which variable would you prefer to eliminate? Okay, you want to get rid of the X? So Kira, if you want to get rid of the X, what would you... Uh... Oh, no, no. It doesn't matter. I don't really think one better than the other. Kira, you said X. So what would you multiply by in order to get rid of the X's? Close, not four. Yeah. <coughs> Because what that will do, uh, the top equation stays the same, but now the bottom equation will have a positive 4 in front of the x, which is what I wanted. Then I'll have a positive 28y and a negative 120. I multiplied everything on the bottom by negative 4. Now I'm ready to eliminate the x's. When you eliminate, what operation are you doing? Yeah, you're doing addition. Paris is also dabbing. You're about four years too late, Paris. Um, so y is negative four. So now, now we go back and plug in for x. <clears throat> you might be tempted to use the second equation, but I would, I would uh, like warn you about it because that, that negative that's in front of the x could cause some havoc for some people. Um, yeah, so I would use I would use any of the other ones. Um, so let's just use the first one: negative four x plus four y. Negative four x plus four times negative four is equal to negative four x minus. You don't have to use an OSS. I have another girl on here, but that's So negative two, negative four. Joseph, you got the same thing? Uh, solve each system by substitution. Okay, well, uh, you know, on the uh, final, there's no way for them to force you to solve by anyone. I, I can do this. Look, if you're going to do substitution, there's no variable here that's already solved for. So what would be the best variable to solve for? 
Well, fine, we can do elimination, but if you want to do substitution, what would be the best variable to solve for? The x on the bottom. The x on the bottom, yeah. But um, it's up to you. What, what would you like to do first? You want to do elimination? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so what variable, what variable do you want to eliminate? Uh, I want to eliminate the y. Yeah, i probably do the same thing. If you're going to eliminate the y's, you would multiply the top times 3. So we get um, 9x minus 6y is equal to negative 9. And then the bottom just stays x plus 6y is equal to 19. Then we eliminate by addition, like just like they do in the hood. And we get... Uh, 10x is equal to 10. Divide by 10. That's one. Now pay by the equation, just like Joseph would do. See, what's funny, even though half of you have your head down, yeah, some of you have probably already failed for the, the semester, but some of the same people that have their heads down, they're kind of on the border between passing and failing. And considering we still have one more practice test and the real final, um, if and when it comes a time where they fall just short, this is what I'm going to keep in mind. This will be my mental picture that I'll keep in mind is if you guys need to take it. At least that won't happen to me. Minus 1, minus 1. Six y is equal to eighteen divided by six. Y is three. This one, this one, you could have really taken advantage of this. <coughs> this one problem counted as seven. You had seven points for it. You had one for each. So um, this is just going over properties. Zero exponent. What, what is anything to the zero power? It is one. Uh, so which one tells you that? Uh, let me see. Anything to the zero power is one. When you take a power of a power, what are you allowed to do with the powers? Multiply. Multiply them. So the one that has that is here is A. When you take the power of a product, we did this at the beginning. Um, what are you allowed to do? When, in, when inside the parentheses you're multiplying and you have. You're allowed to distribute. Notice how on G you're still multiplying, but they each got the M. The A and the B both got the M. You can distribute. What happens if you take a negative power? What is anything to a negative power? No, it's not negative, it's a reciprocal, which is actually, that's what, when you put the one, instead of putting the one underneath, when you put the one on top, that's what means reciprocal. When you multiply the same base, what are you allowed to do with the powers? Add them. Add them. So which one has it being added? B. When you take the power of a quotient, very similar to when you did the power of a product, what are you allowed to do? Distribute. So which one has the A and the B both getting the M with the word division? E. e, which would then leave F here. When you divide the same base, you subtract the exponents. At least that's what Ashley does. The board's this way, Ash. This one blows my mind. What, 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 like, I don't know how this one was missed so much. What is the solution? Like, are you telling me you guys can't name that point? Where are they crossing at? And I'm, I'm pretty sure it was. This was not free response. The, this, this one had this multiple choice because it's a different point. Negative two comma two. Yeah, negative two comma two. That's it. On a system of equations, what word is synonymous with solution? What word, what are you looking for when you look for the solution of a system? What other single word that is replaceable with solution? Awesome. 
It starts with in and ends with intersection. Intersection, yeah. <clears throat> Euler's formula. They give it to you there, relates the number of vertices, blah, blah, blah. Who cares? Solve Euler's formula for f. So if b minus, minus b plus f is equal to 2, just get f by itself. So that would be minus b plus e. Minus v and plus e. F is equal to 2 minus v plus e. There's his favorite answer. Solve the following equation. Yeah, I think I, I think I remember seeing this one on your paper. Equals minus plus nine plus six a plus twenty four minus one four. The twenty fours cancel. Uh, so let's just bring then the a's over to the other side. Plus three a plus three a. So nine is equal to nine a. Divide by nine like Tommy loves to do. One is A. Hmm? Yeah. This one was also surprising. What do you call two equal fractions? We went over this the first month. No. But it's definitely a, another math word. It's another one of those math words that stick with you and maybe you never really know what they mean, but. It starts with pro and ends with portion. It is a proportion. It might, and a proportion has a special way for solving. How do you solve a proportion? Very good. Cross multiply. If two fractions are equal, their cross powers are equal. Negative 2c is equal to 4 times 5. So negative 2c is equal to 20. Divide by negative 2. C is negative 10. Fax machine. Solve each equation with a quadratic formula. Okay, uh, I mean, they can't make you do quadratic formula. I'd actually do factoring here. But we, we covered these pretty recently. Can you think of two numbers that multiply to give you negative 10 to add up to 9? Uh, negative 1 and 10. So r plus 10, r minus 1, equals 0, 0. So r ends up being negative 10, r ends up being positive 1. This, was, this might have been the one where it said um, put one of the solutions only, or meaning that it would have accepted either negative 10 or 1. Oh, yeah. Okay. I see the word 1 like that. Solve for x. Okay. More than one way to do this, you actually could factor here. There's a difference of squares, but let's just use square root properties since we learned that afterwards. Plus 36 plus 36, x squared is equal to 36. Take the square root, meaning you have to understand the square root property. What's the square root of 36? Plus or minus. So this was one of the ones that said select um, all that apply. You had to check off both positive 6 and negative 6. Which function can be used to model the data in the table? All right. Uh, <clears throat> well, all of, can, you, can you give me one word that you can use to describe all of these? What types of functions are those? Well, what was that fair? She said linear. Yeah, those are all linear functions. They all have a slope and y-intercept. And I mean, I can actually look by based on what they're giving me that the y-intercept is going to be at negative one. So w which one does that eliminate? Yeah, it eliminates a. All the other ones have a, have a y-intercept of negative one. But I need to find the slope, so I can just pick any two points. I'll pick the first two. And I'll um, 
So we'll say uh, negative, uh, negative 1 minus 0, subtract the y's over 0 minus 2, which is negative 1 over negative 2, which is positive 1 half. Which one of those have a slope of 1 half? Yeah, B. X over 2 is the same thing as saying 1 half times x. The total area of two rectangles can be represented in terms. So they already modeled it for you. Uh, all, all you have to do is simplify here. So just here, I'll write, I'll write it again. X times 3x plus 1 plus 2x times x plus 3. So distribute 3x squared plus x plus 2x squared plus 6x. And then combine like terms. What's 3 plus 2? Use your fingers. Yeah, so that's 5x squared, and then x and 6x is plus 7x. Only two left. Solve the system. All right. Well, this one says substitution, but we'll use whichever one you want. Which one did you prefer to use, Ferris? Okay. Which variable would you like to eliminate? Okay, if you want to get rid of the x, then you'd have to multiply the top equation by negative 2. Negative 4x minus 2y is equal to 10. 4x plus 5y is equal to negative 7. Now the x's have the same variable, um, these are the same coefficient, but different um, signs. So and then we add everywhere, negative 2 and 5 is 3y, and this gives you 3 divided by 3, y gives you 1. Now that I know that y is 1, plug it into whichever one you want, I'll use the top one. 2x plus 1 is equal to negative 5 minus 2 minus 1, x is negative 6 divided by 2. And then five, yeah, this one was, I think nobody got this one right. <clears throat> and that's fine. Like, this is a higher level thinking problem, but um, this this would be a perfect type of problem that shows up on, on, a, on some type of, uh, like, an EOC or a final exam. Find the value for M. So find find this M so that that has a slope of, of, uh, of negative 3. Well, the first thing I had to do is put this into a formula. Um where I could find slope. Now, normally that would mean putting it into slope intercept or point slope, but I actually showed you a shortcut. Because if I were just to do minus 2 and minus 2, right? So then I would write as mx plus 6y is equal to negative 2. What form does that look like? No, it looks like standard. Um, where really the M is taking the place of the A, the, B, uh, the 6 is the B, and then this is the C. Well, I know, I know this requires a lot of memory, and this is not going to show up on a reference sheet, but if you remember, I showed you a shortcut for slope that said that slope here is just going to be negative A over B. So if they tell me the slope is negative 3, I would just put a negative 3 where the slope is. What's taking the place of A? The M, yeah, the M, so I would write negative M over the B is 6. Multiply by 6. So negative 18 is equal to negative M, which means that 18 is equal to positive M, which is positive 18. 